Well, I got something in the mail. That's not it. Impulse RC sent me this is a new frame. A new frame that they have just come out with. And I'm going to do a build video for you. It is not an alien or an alien, an alien, an alien, an alien. This is not an alien. This is not a helix. This is that was stupid. This is called the reverb. So, without any more talking, unnecessary talking, let's get to the build video. First thing we need to do, there are press fit nuts that go into the bottom plate. This frame is actually pretty interesting the way that it goes together. Uh, front has these holes here. I can show you like this. These are for the front for the camera plate that goes like this. So that would be the front, and then the back sits on top like this. And then the PDB sits here like this. And we'll show you how that all goes together really nicely, but for now. First things first, let's get the press fit nuts into here, and I will fast forward that. Press fit nuts are in. Let's put this frame together now. Uh, you'll notice that there is three different size standoffs. And the frame is on the ground. I will explain that later. These cones will be used because you do have to wrench down the bolts that go into the press fit nuts pretty freaking tight. So there's two size nuts here. There's a shorter one, yoinks, and there's a longer one, yoinks. The longer one goes in the inside. The arms lock into place internally underneath the other plate, under, underneath the back plate. So you can see here when they go in correctly like that the arms all lock into place. I don't have the cone washers on here, so I just want to see which nuts go where. Which nuts go where? Where do your nuts go? My nuts go everywhere. I don't know where my nuts go. So, I should put the cone washer on. There we go. The longer screws go in the center four. So, you'll notice that there are two different size non-button head screws. Uh, the longer of those screws go on the inside here, and that is because these rubber vibration mounts will screw into them here, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, first, let's get all of the arms locked into place with the center screws and the cone washers. There you can see the cone washer is there, so you can really crank these things down. And the GoPro is dead. Cool. I did change the GoPro. Okay, so we have it assembled. Now, this is where you really crank down all of these screws as tight as you can get them. Uh, you can use Loctite if you want to. I might recommend doing that for these guys here um, because vibration can wiggle things loose so Loctite pretty much locks everything in place. Not a bad idea. Really crank these fuckers in there because you don't want that shit vibrating loose. Okay, so now, what are the different size standoffs for? Well, I can show you that. First, let's put on these four vibration mounts that they give you. They are rubber, 
they will screw into this plate here. And this is the four, one, two, three, four longer screws that you put through the four center uh, holes. These are the flight controller screws as well. And these will be what you mount your flight controller to. They are wiggly. And All right, so, different size standoffs. First two, we will throw those yoinks, yoinks, up in the front. One, and we're gonna use these screws here to put them on. The third one goes right in the middle, right here, and this, is for this so when you put on your GoPro on the top plate which is here you'll see there's a hole right there matches up with the hole right there and that lines up perfectly to give you what you need to screw on your new session mount and I gotta say these session mounts are durable and clean anyway let's finish up with our standoffs so there's two really short standoffs, and those standoffs go right here, and the top of those standoffs are actually going to be your receiver antenna mounts, which is actually really cool, because then these, they give you tubes, go inside the little hole right here, and you put in your antenna tube, and as you screw down through here, you're going to get uh, it threads into hold the antenna tube in place, which is really smart and it works really well. And I've actually tested this with Crossfire, so when you have the split uh, V coming out, it works really well with the Crossfire. You can see it here, there's a split V. Ha ha ha, I showed you the other reverb frame. But let's finish putting this together. <laughs> Now, PDB. They give you the power on either side. Uh, this is laid out for KISS, so it's the same layout as KISS. It's uh, PPM, telemetry, ground, and power and po negative and positive are on the same side. The cool thing about this is it goes right over top of your vibration mounts here. So it's similar to the Helix where it's got pass-through sort of standoffs. But with that, you can just drop it on and they give you some foamy sticky tape to put on. So you foamy sticky tape this thing down right there. Boom, boom, you're good to go. So without further ado, so there we go. We have our double stick of tape, double sticked tape. Drop this guy down there. And there, we're on, we're good. So to continue, we have the frame set up. Um, fortunately for you, I did all of my soldering ahead of time. So I have, well, not all of it. My ESC's all ready to go. I just need to solder on the motors. Let's pre-tin this guy. Do, 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 We have this together. They do give you a fantastic little wire that goes into the plug here and it has a lock clip, which is great. One wire is ESCs, the other wire power and ground. Fantastic. So I'm going to use KISS V2. Can you focus? Can you focus? Can you focus? KISS V2 flight controller will be going on reverb. So this is what we'll be running there. I will put a link in the description down below for the pin layout for your KISS flight controller, or I could show it. And yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. You only go in one way. If you plug it in the wrong way, you probably shouldn't be in this hobby. Look at that. Look at that. So fresh and so clean. There you have it. Look at how nice and organized that is. And then when you say, 
Well, what are you going to use for a VTX? Isn't it going to get sloppy? No. No, it's not. It's going to be even cleaner. That's even possible. Even cleaner? What are you talking about? Well, if you use something like this, oh, how clean you will be. I have set up my VTX here. Uh, PDB, sorry, VTX OSD, uh, TBS FP Vision. There's a lot of letters here. This little board will give me my VTX and my OSD. So I'm not going to use anything else. And the way that I set this up is there's power in. Uh, direct power in gives me um, voltage monitoring and milliamp consumption. So that's why I do that. And then these standoffs, usually this goes in a TBS power cube, which I don't have, doesn't matter. This would stack into the power cube and this is the bottom layer. I don't care about the power cube because I hate beta. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use KISS P2. Um, and the way that this works is I use the positive to come down and power into the positive here on my PDB and the negative coming out of the negative here is gonna come down and hook into my negative on the PDB. So what that does is it powers the board. I get direct volt, lipo voltage into the board to give me uh, true battery voltage and everybody is happy. So let's go ahead and solder this to this in a way that works so that I can put this on top. And then I'm going to use four little standoffs. Very nice. And this is just going to be a test fit to make sure everything is seated correctly before I wire in my receiver, micro uh, V2 crossfire. Everything's down tight. This should sit nicely on top. You run your battery out the side. I don't know what that is. Battery out the side, VTX out the back. Everything looks like it is perfectly fitting. It's funny how this shit always happens. You get everything sort of buttoned up and then you're like, oh, I need to run another wire. And then you can't get that other wire underneath because that's the way it works. You gotta take it all apart again. Fuck. This is the BST port on the Crossfire setup. That gives me stick commands to control everything that I need to control, which is another fantastic thing about Crossfire. Okay, there. So we have that down. This needs to get stuck down with double-sided tape, but our receiver is in. Everything is there. This is there. Camera goes there. So, kiss flight controller uh, down here. And then this is the TBS FP Vision layer. And I have power and ground going out into the PDB right here. And then this is, uh, yeah, that's all whatever. So now we gotta do. Uh, I guess I could put on the camera and we also need to wire in our ESCs. Alright, we've got four ESCs, a little taperoo underneath each one. This is just for impact to make sure that if it hits hard they don't blow the fuck up slamming against the carbon fiber obviously we'll wrap them in a peach ring tube as well but it's just easier to do this now than do it later like that good job hmm. i wonder if i wasn't recording any of that that'd be awesome should be able to power this fucker on and see what we get. Ideally everything turns on, doesn't catch on fire, and the motor spin. One important thing, don't forget your 
antenna so you don't short out your VTX. And I always use, where is it? Where is it? This little guy will save your life. Not really, but a lot of money from burning things up because you know, you always think I soldered everything correctly. Nothing is going to go wrong. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. I've built 43 quads, blah, blah, blah. But then you plug it in and then you'll be pissed off. So no smoke, no light. Fantastic. Tyrannus. Cool. Power this on. And the motors are spinning. That is all things that I like to see. Now we can mount the FPV camera. Put the antennas on with our special little antenna adapters. And fly this thing around. Cool. Wait, oh, right. So one last thing is there's a piece that I printed. I will put a link down below. This is for your VTX antenna. There we go, like that. So now we have a very, very nice clean build. And we need our tubes. Boink. The longer screws here are for these pieces here, which are the antenna holders. And they go down through the top like so, and then we'll go all the way down through here, yoinks, and into the standoffs right there. This little mount, which they give you, so they 3D printed this mount, which has the hole for the screw, and then it actually has a spot for the receiver uh, antenna tube. And what happens is when you run the screw down through, the top, it actually threads into the antenna tube and it holds and locks in place. And then you can just take your screw and then run your screw down through the mount. And now our antenna tubes are not going anywhere, locked in, locked in place, locked in place. All right, so for this guy, you can go through, yoinks, to put this screw here. This screw goes through the camera mount and down through here. In order to do that, you can go right through the center like that. And then your other two, you simply run right down the front. When you're putting the top plate on, it's important to note the shorter screws are for the back. The longer screws here go up here through the TPU session mount. And there you have it. The reverb frame is complete. What a sexy, nice little frame. So there you have it. Abbreviated build of the reverb frame. Uh, very simple. Really, 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 really compact, great frame. Um, I'll take the camera down and show you exactly. Focus how simple it is inside here with the TBS FP Vision Stack. Um, it's really, I think it's one of the better, better ways to build, but that's my personal opinion. Here is KISS Flight Controller, and here is the TBS FP Vision. This one does OSD, VTX, and power regulation and, and milliamp voltage. Anyway, there is the reverb frame. What a sec.